You're welcome, my dear students, in this new episode from your program, Madrasa al Hawa, to explain the curriculum of science for PREP 1. Last time we talked about the uh, atomic structure, and today, today we're going to complete explaining the electronic configuration, and then if there is a time, we can talk about energy. Uh, electronic configuration. But first, we talked last time about the uh, rule 2 in the square that uh, control the uh, uh, number of electrons that fill the uh, energy levels of atom. But today, uh, on the monitor please, we can notice that the outermost energy level of any atom can't carry more than eight electrons. Outermost means the last one, maybe the first, if it has just one uh, energy level as hydrogen, if the second, if the third, maybe a fourth, maybe fifth, maybe sixth, maybe seventh one. If it is the uh, outermost energy level, the last energy level in this atom, it can't carry more than it. If, even if it can carry 32, even if it is the third one that can carry, what, 18. But if the third one is the outermost energy level, it can't carry more than eight electrons. Okay, so... Now, the question is make electronic configuration. Four. Number one, sodium, Na. Two, calcium, Ca. Three, argon, uh, Ar. Sodium, Na. Sodium, Na is written like this. 11, 23. First, what's meant by Na? It is the symbol of sodium. That consists of two letters. First one is capital and the second is small. It comes from natrium, the Latin word that means sodium. What's meant by 11? It is the atomic number. That means number of protons or number of electrons in the atom. What's meant by 23? It is the mass number. That means number of protons plus number of neutrons. But here, number of protons only. So first, if I ask you to uh, find out the number of neutrons, number of neutrons here equal mass number minus atomic number. That means 23 minus 11, and it will be what? 12. So, this atom, the atom of sodium, contains 11 protons, 11 electrons, and, and 20, uh, 12 neutrons. Now, he asks me to make the electronic configuration, so I must first make the uh, diagram by making first the nucleus, and right here, 11 protons and 12 neutrons. Then, first energy level, second, third. First one, K is saturated by two electrons, so I write two. It can carry two and saturated by two, and I have 11 protons. Now, 11 minus 2, the remain is 9. Can I put 9 here in L? No. Why? Because L now is the outermost energy level. And if it is the outermost energy level, it can't carry more than 8. So, it is wrong. I must write 8, only 8. Why? Because the outermost energy level can't carry more than it. Then, now the remain is one. Just one, here. This is electronic configuration for sodium. Number two, calcium. Calcium, 20, 40. What's meant by 20? 
20 means the number of protons. 40, number of protons plus number of neutrons. So, 20, and here 40. K, L, M, N. K saturated by 2. L saturated by 8. Now I have 10. Why 8 here? Because now it is the outermost energy level. But now there are 10. Can I put 10 here? No. It's false. It's wrong. Because it will be the outermost energy level that can't carry more than, yes, more than 8. So I must put 8 and the remain what? 2. So it will be 2, 8, 8, 2. Okay. Argon. Argon gas. A, R, what? A, R, 18. So, here, 18, positive. First one, K, L, M, N, O. K can carry what? Yes, 2. L can carry 8. Now they are 10. So the remain is 8. Yes, 8. Notes, this atom is saturated. The outermost energy level contains 8. So it is saturated. It's called noble gas because its outermost energy level is filled completely with the 8 electrons. On the monitor, please. This is argon, 2. And eight, then eight. This is calcium, two, eight, eight, two. Oxygen, two, six. Helium, it contains only one energy level that is saturated by two electrons. It's filled completely. So it is called an inert or noble gas. And this is fluorine. Fluorine has nine electrons, and uh, its configuration is two in K and what and seven in L. Now, my dear student, let's talk about unit two, lesson one: energy, resources, and forms. We talked about energy before, and every one of us knows that energy is the ability to do work. But now the question is, if I want to do work, if I want to move this stage, and I tried to move this stage, but it didn't move, the question is, does or did I do work? No. Work here means zero, equal zero. Why? Because work, I didn't, I didn't do change. I didn't do any change, so work equals zero. Work means two factors. Number one, the force, the way that I can carry, the way that I can move. Time is displacement. Displacement means the distance in a straight line that I moved this weight. Suppose that I have a bag. This bag, uh, the mass of this bag is 10 kilogram. Okay? And that this, it's, it's mass. But weight equal 10 times 10, mass times 10, as we studied in primary 6. So its weight is, its weight is 10, uh, or I'm sorry, 100 Newton, 100 Newton. I try to carry this force, 100 Newton, for 1 meter. Now I exerted work. If I wanted to uh, carry it for 2 meters, the work is doubled. But if I couldn't move it, so... I didn't do work. So first, as you see on the monitor, we have two different uh, examples. First one, the person who tried to move the wall, he can't. So work done equals zero because it didn't do change. But the second one is the man who tried to move this wheel. If the wheel moved, it means that he 
did the work that he exerted work so now work equal force times displacement but not my dear student that work in joule force its unit is newton and displacement is measured in meter unit not displacement mustn't be in kilometer mustn't be in centimeter if you find it in the uh, exam in centimeter you must convert it into meter if you find it in kilometer you mustn't uh, and change it or convert it into meter because displacement must be in meter force must be in newton and work must be in joule okay by increasing force work increases by increasing displacement work also increases suppose that i try to carry a bag its mass is five kilogram five kilogram to move it one meter Oh, I exerted work. If another time I carry 10 kilogram to move it one, one meter, the work is doubled. If I try to carry 15 kilogram to move one meter, the work is treble. So by increasing, by increasing force, by increasing weight that I can carry, work increases. And displacement. Suppose if I have a bag its mass is five kilogram and try to move it for one meter i exerted work but if i carried five kilogram for two meters the work is doubled for three meter the work is tripled so by increasing displacement work increases okay what's meant by energy energy as i said before it is the ability to do work but what are resources of energy? First one is the sun. And the sun is permanent. Permanent resource means the source that doesn't vanish, that uh, uh, lives forever, not vanish, not finish, but it continue forever. Number two, wind. Number three, fuel. Number four, food. So the sun is a so resource of energy because it gives us energy it gives us heat and light wind we can use wind to have kinetic energy to generate electricity fuel we can use fuel to move our cars move planes move trains we can use fuel to generate electricity food we use food to generate heat and the kinetic energy inside our bodies so resources of energy number one sun wind fuel food and uh, another uh, two we have many sources resources of energy we have nuclear energy we have nuclear energy another one we have uh, 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 nuclear energy from nuclear reactors But now let's talk about the forms of energy. Forms of energy. We have many forms of energy that we studied before. As we see on the monitor, this is number five, movement of water and nuclear reactions. But now let's talk about the forms of energy. Number one, light energy as electric lamps, light energy as the sunlight, as you see. Number two, sound energy as loudspeaker. Number three is electric energy as wind generator. Electric energy that wind generator that generates electricity, uh, uh, electric generator. So it's electric generator, not wind generator. Number four, chemical energy as food. Food contains chemical energy that it changes inside our bodies to, to kinetic and heat. Number B, car battery that has chemical energy that it changes into, into electric energy. Number C, fuels that contains also chemical energy. Heat energy as heater 
all types of heater. Number six, nuclear energy as energy produced from the reactions in the nucleus of the atom. Mechanical energy. Mechanical energy here means potential and the kinetic energy. Potential and kinetic energy. So what's meant by mechanical energy? Mechanical energy it is the summation of what? Of potential and kinetic. Potential plus kinetic energy, it is called what? Mechanical energy. So first we have to talk now about potential and kinetic energy. First, what's meant by potential energy? Potential energy means that everybody is uh, constant, doesn't move, has energy. It's called potential energy. It is the energy of body due to its position. It's energy stored inside the body due to its position. It's potential energy, as you see on the monitor. Uh, this stone is on the uh, mountain. It has height, so it has potential energy. It is a stored energy in the object due to the work done on it. We have two types of stored energies. My dear student, number one is potential energy. It is stored. I can't see. I can't feel. I can't uh, smell. I can't. It's just stored energy. And chemical energy that is stored in fuel, in battery, and in food. But potential energy is affected by height and weight. Suppose that I have 10 kilograms, my dear student, and I carry it on my hand uh, in this uh, position for one minute. Oh, it's heavy. But if I want to carry this 10 kilogram on this position, oh, I will be more tired. Why? Because I exerted more energy. Because potential energy is increased by increasing height. By increasing height, potential energy increases. And wait, if I carry this 10 kilogram in this position, and another time and carry 20 kilogram in the same position, which time? I exert more energy. Yes, second time. Give reason. Because by increasing weight, weight of object that is affected by mass, by increasing weight of object, the potential energy increases. So potential energy is affected by two factors. Number one is height of the object. Number two is weight of the object. So potential energy equal, as you see, height times weight. H is, is the symbol of Height, W is the symbol of weight, P dot E, P capital dot E capital, is the symbol of potential energy. So potential energy equal height times weight. Potential energy is measured by joule. Height, uh, it's, it's uh, measured in meter. Weight is measured in what? In Newton. Factors affecting the potential energy. Number one, height by increasing the height of object. From the ground, its potential energy increases. Number two, number two, weight. But now, how can I get weight? Weight equal mass times acceleration due gravity. Acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is symbolized by G small. Mass is symbolized by M. So weight equal M G mass times acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is supposed to be 10 meter per second square. It's constant. It's 9.8. But uh, if it is, if you didn't find it in the exam, you can say that it equals 10 meter per second square. It is G. Acceleration due to the gravity. And mass must be in kilogram. Weight must be in Newton. Notes again on the monitor, please. Weight in Newton. Mass must be in kilogram. Mass here must be in kilogram, not in gram. If you find it in gram, you must convert it into kilogram. Okay. Second, 
let's talk about kinetic energy. What's meant by kinetic energy? It is the energy, or it is the work done during the motion of an object. Work done during the motion of an object. Or it is energy of object due to its motion. The same. The moving car, as you see, has energy. It's called kinetic energy. Any moving object has kinetic energy. If you uh, move, if you move, you, has kin you have kinetic energy. If you stop, you have potential energy. But the summation of potential and the kinetic are called together, are called mechanical energy. Factors affecting kinetic energy. Number one, mass. Mass of object. By increasing the mass of object, its kinetic energy increases. Let me give you an example, my dear student. If I have a small car and another very big car, and the two cars move with the same speed, which one has more energy? Which one can stop easily? Sure, the smallest car stopped easily, stopped faster than the bigger car, because its energy is smaller than the bigger car. But the bigger car can't stop easily, because its kinetic energy is higher is bigger is more by increasing mass of object its kinetic energy increasing number two speed if i have two cars have the same volume the same size and they move together first one moves at 60 kilometer per hour and second moves with 180 kilometer per hour which one if the driver won't stop which one stops easily which one stops fast first or second yes first because by decreasing speed you can stop your car easily because its kinetic energy is not big it's a small kinetic energy but the car that moves with higher speed it has more kinetic energy so the factors are two number one mass by increasing mass of object its kinetic energy increases number two speed or velocity but speed here means velocity velocity is speed but has direction uh, its velocity increases, okay? By increasing the velocity, its kinetic energy increases. On the monitor, please, factors affecting kinetic energy, mass of object. By increasing mass of object, its kinetic energy increases. Number two, velocity of the object. By increasing the uh, velocity, the kinetic energy increases. So, kinetic energy equal mass half mass velocity square half mass velocity square okay half time is mass but mass half half mass velocity square mass here in kilogram velocity in meter per second square kinetic energy now let's go to the uh, this question this it's not easy an object whose mass is eight kilogram mass equal eight kilogram it's in kilogram yes it's okay it's good was throwing up until it reached its maximum height this is the object its maximum height at 15 meter above the ground above the ground its velocity find its velocity now he needs what he needs velocity at 3.75 meter height now he gave me mass and already i have gravity acceleration it's constant 10 meter per second square and we have a uh, height 15. how can i get mass I can't get mass even I have kinetic energy that equal half mass velocity square but I don't have kinetic energy how can I get kinetic energy first kinetic energy plus potential energy equal what mechanical energy mechanical energy any any position equal mechanical at any position and potential energy at the top equal kinetic energy before reaching the ground so mechanical energy equal potential at the top 
So if I got potential at the top, I can get mechanical energy. So potential energy equal mgh. M here is 8 times 10 times 15. Okay, it will be 1,200 1, watt joule. Okay, this is this is mechanical and this is mechanical energy equal 1,200. But potential energy at 3.75 meter will be if you uh, wanna to uh, write mgh, it will be what? It will be 300 joules. So kinetic energy here equal what? Equal 1,200. It's mechanical minus potential. 300, so it will be what? It will be 900. Okay, so uh, kinetic energy equal half mass velocity square. So velocity square equal kinetic energy divided half mass. So velocity equal root square of kinetic energy divided half mass. And I have now kinetic energy and I have mass. So I can easily get velocity. Now the time uh, is out, so I have to uh, say goodbye. But before saying goodbye, I have to say uh, wait for us because uh, after me, directly with Miss Russia, uh, we will study uh, science curriculum for second uh, prep. Thank you and goodbye.